recent video, uh, someone requested that I show them how they can identify points in a scatter plot. And I said, I don't know if this is going to work for you, but here is one way that you can do this. You can just create an ID variable and then have the ID show up next to the point. And then you can tell which point is which. Of course, this isn't going to work for everyone. And John Rarick says, this is unfortunately not helpful. I have a scatter plot with nearly a thousand points in it, and I need a way of selecting the specific X and Y values in the columns of data that were used to create the chart such that the specific point in those two numbers create in the chart is highlighted. All right, so I gave John Rarick a thumbs up. Of course, this solution is not going to work for everyone. Let me give you a solution that will work for John. And I will post this on my website under files www.berkeyacademy.com and let me show you how this works and then I will show you how I created this. At least I'll show you the basic idea of how I created this. So what we have here is I have, I don't have a thousand points, but I have, oh, 200 or and so. But I made this spreadsheet especially for John Rarick so that if he wants to download this, he can use it because I have enough rows here to where he can just add his data and and then make his plot and then it'll work so here's what we got i added a little check box here in the left and then this column to the right is tied to it now if you don't want to see it you can hide it right you don't really need to see that if you don't want to but when you click the box beside any row it does two things. Well, several things. It, it changes this value to true right here. Let me zoom in here just a smidge so you can see what's going on. And it also, when you check that box, it changes the value from minus one, minus one. Now, minus one, minus one is what I have here so that these values won't show up in the scatter plot where all the values are positive. But when you click the check box, it changes that value from minus one minus one to the value over here on the left and when it does that it plots it in orange over here so no orange orange so now you can see kind of how that works and you can check as many of these boxes as you feel like and it will highlight the corresponding points so as I said, I, I will add this to www.berkeyacademy.com and I'll put a link in the description below. However, if you just want to go directly, then I'll name this Excel Mega Selector. That's what I'll put it under on my website under files so that you can easily find it. It'll be uh, the files there are in alphabetical order, so it'll be easy to find. Now let me show you how I created this, okay? So if you wanted to recreate something like this yourself, you can. So we start off with some data here. And what we wanna do is add like our alter alternate X and Y, right? And so what I just did is I typed minus one here and then copied them down so they're all minus ones. Then what we need to do is add a checkbox. And in order to add a checkbox, you need to add in the developer tab into the ribbon. Let me just show you that very quickly. You can go to file options. And I think it's here under customize the ribbon. You need to click this little box that says developer right here. And then you'll get another tab that says developer. Click developer and go to insert and up the top here, the little picture of a checkbox. All right, so there it inserted a checkbox. Let's move it up here a little bit. And before we do anything else, let's right click on the checkbox, edit text, and I don't see any reason to put any text in there. Let's move our, with, our, with the arrow keys on our, on our keyboard. Instead of clicking on the side on this cell, let's move up to it with the arrow keys on our keyboard, copy it. So control C and then let's paste the little checkbox down here, control V. And now we have all these checkboxes. 
Now here comes the tiring part, and uh, I actually didn't do it this way. Uh, if you want, I'll make another video showing you how I actually did it using another program. But what we have to do is right click on each of these little check boxes and go to Format Control. It's unchecked and click Cell Link and then click over here on B2. Hit Enter and then OK. And now let's check that box and see what happens. Well, OK. So now once we did that little control, it changes the value in B from true to false. And now, but we have to do this individually for each of these boxes. Right click, Format Control, Cell Link, and then click over here, hit Enter, hit OK. And then right click, Format Control, etc. Cell Link. Uh, if anybody knows of a, of a quicker way to do this, let me know. At least one that doesn't involve programming. I used an automatic little tool that did all these for me. It's not part of Excel. I'll just tell you the name now and then I can show you how it works if I have enough requests for this. This is the program I use called Tiny Task Portable, which you can tell it to record and then you can move and click and do typing on the keyboard. And then if you think it through correctly, after you record it, you can play it back and it'll repeat exactly the same thing you did. So when it comes to things like right clicking on a box, clicking to the right, clicking on another cell, etc. That's a lot quicker way to do it than doing it manually. And you can have Tiny Task Portable repeat the action that you did as many times as you want. And it took a while to get it right to where it would automate this, but you get the idea. Now let me pause the video and do a couple more of these cells here real quickly and then show you the next step that I did. Okay, I've gotten up to row seven done here. I think that's enough to illustrate the point. Then what I did is I said, okay, instead of just having minus ones here, let's, let's enter a little if statement. So I, I said equals if this cell B2 equals true in caps, comma, then let's make the value of this, this box here equal to the X value in C2. So C2, otherwise just call it minus one, like we did before. So what that does, when, when we check the box, that copies the value from X over there. Okay, so let me, let's do that another time over here. So let's equals if B2 equals true, put the value of the Y coordinate in there. Otherwise, so comma, otherwise minus one. And then we just need to copy these down. All right, so I'm not going to take the time to do all those checkboxes manually right now. Again, I, I have them over here and you can download that so you don't have to do all this manually. But if you ever need to do something in the future, you'll know what to do. Okay, so now we need to add these values to the scatter plot over here. So let's copy them, select and then copy, and then go up here to home paste oh sorry before we do that select the uh, select the scatter plot then go to home paste paste special and we want to paste this data into the plot and the series names are in the first row category x values in the first column okay so this looks good now the one thing we we want to change remember all these are minus ones and we don't want these minus ones actually to show up in this plot just choose somewhere that's not in the range of the data if your data is not all positive like this is. So just right, right click format axis and make the minimum here zero. And same thing over here on the um, X axis, format axis, minimum zero. That way we're not going to see all that area that we don't want over here. And then all we have to do is go over here and click our check, bo check box and we can you know, make that column smaller and you can kind of see it as you ch check the box, the point jumps from the minus one, minus one position that it's in and covers up the blue point. So that way we can see any of these points that we want. 
that's a good way to do it. The only bad thing about this is once you get about a thousand of these check boxes in a worksheet, it really does cause things to slow down quite a bit. So there might be a better way to do this, but hey, this works and I'm going to give you this worksheet to download so you don't even have to type in all these cell references by hand if you don't want to. So I think this is a pretty decent solution, but hey, I think it's, it's pretty awesome as it is. So let me know what you think. If you have a better way to do this kind of thing, let me know. Let's share ideas. If you like this video, if you like this spreadsheet I've created for you, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. But otherwise, keep those questions coming. I like figuring out stuff like this. And hey, good luck, guys.